Now back to Inside West Virginia Politics with Mark Curtis. And welcome back everyone on Inside West Virginia Politics. As promised, we're doing a reporter's round table today. We had Brad McElhenney on for two segments from uh, West Virginia Metro News. I would like to introduce first Lacey Pearson, a reporter for the, uh, the Charleston Gazette Mail, and Stephen Allen Adams, who's a uh, capital correspondent for the uh, Ogden Newspaper Group. Tell us where some of your papers are. Parkersburg, Wheeling, Weirton, Elkins, and Martinsburg. Yeah, you kind of like me. You got we had stations all, all over, over the state. All over the northern part of the state. Yeah, yeah it's, it's fun, and you, you certainly get a different perspective from the different delegates from the, the regions of the state. Let's talk about, let's just give each of you kind of an opening statement. What were your overall impressions of covering the legislature this year? It was kind of weird. Obviously, we had, a, had the Capitol was closed to the general public. As I always say, you could fire a cannonball through there and not hit a soul. But what kind of challenges do, did it present covering the news? Sure, uh, certainly historical. Uh, we will probably, I would hope in our lifetimes, never see a session quite like this where obviously the public can't get into the building because of exactly executive orders and people are spaced out and uh, you know reporters this year we couldn't be on the floor which really was one of the things that I think affected uh, us and Lacey might agree with that too where we're used to talking to lawmakers and bantering and sometimes picking up some information here and there news tips things of that nature but it was a little harder this year to really kind of be in front of lawmakers you know we were up in the galleries uh, reporting uh, covering the sessions you know space was limited in the uh, committee rooms so in that aspect, it made the job a little bit harder. Yeah, normally when the television cameras, we have to be at the rear of the house while you guys can sit down at the front of the chamber. The nice thing about being in the back, I'm going to give away a big secret here. A lot of the delegates bring a lot of snacks and candy because sometimes the sessions can be very long. And they would always turn around and hand me a you know, chocolate bar or something or some popcorn or something. It was nice. We couldn't do that this year. I saw a lot of you up in the gallery and you up in the gallery. What was it like for you, Lacey? Right. Well, you mentioned snacks. I will say I want to give credit to Ann Ayla in the House of Delegates. She was very good to bring us up little treats every now and then when it's still wasn't allowed yeah. actually in the house rules so thank you to Ann for breaking the rules for us that was very nice um, <laughs> but, call it around. she never gave me any right. oh, gosh. <laughs> we'll have to fix that next year um, but yeah like Stephen said moving around in the Capitol was a lot different this session than in past sessions and um, you know we still had access to the same rooms so to speak and we still had access to the meetings but it was really limited and to move around the building you know I had to rely on my press pass a lot more than I have in years past to prove that I'm a person who has business here in the house, I'm um, going to meetings. You couldn't just pop into a meeting room and pop out. You had to run it past p certain people to help you get in and out. Um, it was a lot different too. You talked about being in the back of the house. That was a lot different. Um, being in the Senate, the Senate gallery and the House galleries are obviously different where the House are, are benches and the Senate has chairs. So in the Senate, you know, there were only certain chairs that you could sit in in the gallery. Once those were all full, you couldn't be in the gallery anymore. So it was a first come first serve sort of journalism coverage basis. Yeah, and we're not do, doing this as a gripe session. We understand the importance of social distancing, masks wearing, and protecting each other and protecting the, the lawmakers. And so we abided by the rules that just pose certain challenges. Let's talk about some issues. The personal income tax was probably your biggest issue. Uh, thoughts on that? Yeah, well, the question remains what's going to happen next. Obviously, the governor put out his plan. Uh, it's not a plan that the House agreed with specifically. The Senate agreed with parts of it. Uh, governor's plan, of course, was going to cut it by 50, uh, at 1.60 percent. They lowered that to 50 percent. Then you saw a situation where they were going to raise other taxes, such as sales taxes, remove exemptions, raise ex excise taxes. The Senate agreed with parts of that, made some changes. They came up with a compromise plan. The House had a plan that didn't raise any taxes, but faced it out over a period of multiple, multiple years. Uh, they did not agree with the governor or the Senate for that matter uh, and decided that they weren't nope, going to vote for the bill. Governor called them out and then you had a situation where the House said, okay, well, we'll call that bluff and voted it down. Question is going to be, what happens from here? Are we going to see a special session for a PIT? We don't know yet. The governor is going to go on a road tour. Uh, he's going to try to take that message out there, but I've talked to a number of lawmakers, particularly on the House side, and people keep telling them they don't like the governor's plan or the Senate plan as well. So I I think you're going to see a situation where even with a special session, I don't know if you'll get to a plan. Well, even if I could just jump in sure. too, that what Stephen just talked about was something was, that was sort of a theme throughout the session, which was this is our first year with Republican supermajorities in both chambers of the legislature, as well as Governor Justice now being properly elected as a Republican for the first time. Um, and you saw the Senate and the governor 
pair up a lot and really come together a lot for a lot of things, but the House didn't seem to disagree with, or didn't seem to agree with a lot of the things yeah. that they proposed. You got 78 Republicans. Roger Hanshaw's job is to herd cats some days. Yeah. In the, <laughs> but he got them together on one big issue. We'll talk, we did talk about that. We're going to have more of our reporters roundtable here on Inside West Virginia Politics. Stay with us.